Okay, uh, about Kunel Nagel, if you don't know it, um, just to spend a few words about this company that is hosting us. I'm working at Kunel Nagel. Um, I'm from, I'm working in the air logistics at the moment, but our department as like data science department is involved in many other topics. And in total, we are 80K employees. So you can imagine it's a very huge company. Now we are in one of the buildings here uh, in Hamburg. The other one is, is in Athens city where I'm sitting. This building is mostly for software engineers. And then if you have any questions about Pino Nagelos afterwards, feel free to uh, approach me. And there are some openings, some open roles. So feel free to contact me or apply. And that's pretty much it. Now I will go straight to the demo. Okay. Once again, why am I doing this? Because it's been a while at until nine. And let's see if I can do something with it. And now you you will be like, yeah, but he prepared something before. He definitely prepared something for this presentation. No, I didn't. Let's do this together. So the only thing that I did was downloading this Titanic CSV. First of all, this is the application. This is the new UI. So who knows Nime? Uh, is it the first time? Who knew Nime already? Three, four, five. Okay. This is the new UI. Have you seen it already? Okay. So basically, um, in this new UI, we have uh, the list of nodes. We can just drag and drop whatever we need here. Let's lead it. And what I want to do now is, together with you, read this uh, CSV file and start playing with the data in it. Okay. If you have none, you can also do it with me, but it's better if you just follow this demo because then there will be time to do this exercise, the main exercise. So let's start. Um, I want to re read the CSV. So I have the CSV on my desktop and I want to read it. I'm just looking for CSV. I see this node. You can just drag and drop the node in the main workflow, in the main workspace. Now that we have this node, there are some options here. You can add a comment. You can look into the, the, the settings. And these are basically hidden because we can't do anything yet. Um, but what we can do is look into the settings. And now it says file. So we need to select which file we want to read. I guess that I'm browsing, going to the desktop, reading the Titanic, and I open it. It's really nice that we can already have a preview of the data here. So we can see which columns we're importing and if uh, the CSV reader is actually reading the CSV um, in the right way. What's also interesting is I can um, look into this transformation and I guess that I can um, take out some of the columns that I don't need. For instance, I can get rid of this and maybe the passenger ID. Okay, so this is what we get out of this. This is the preview. Um, and uh, yeah, it looks good. I'm just applying, okay. And here it is. Now, this node shows this um, yellow kind of traffic light. It means that we have to execute it. We just hit play, and here it is. And now, if we click on it, we have a preview. This is, this is the collection. This is the CSV that we just read. What's also interesting, if you're coming from Python like me, is that you can hit statistics and have a look into the statistics. This is something I usually do, especially to see if there are missing values, for instance. Um, so of course, I'm, I'm, I work as a data scientist, so there would be a lot of a kind of data science references to what we're gonna see in this small demo. So we see that we have some missing values. We can have a look into uh, the quantile and so far so on. So now I look at the data and I'm like, hmm, um, I want to get read off some columns. I want to maybe rename um, the classes that I have here in sex. So let's start from there. What I can do is go to, um, let's say, uh, replace string 
replacer. Let's play with this. I connect this node. Another option is just do this. I release and then I can write replacer. Okay. Now this is showing some kind of error. It says, hey, go into the setting and see what happens. I go into the setting and what's our target column? We say sex. We go to the pattern. We can write, I guess, some expression here, wild card and so forth so on. But what we what I want to do is just replace female with F. That's it. Let's see if it works. Green. And now if we click on it, we see the preview. And you can see that female is now F. So we, we did some string magic here. So now let's let's set like a goal for something more interesting. Um, let's say that we want to get rid of all the columns and just keep age and uh, fair. And then we want to have some linear model showing us what's the relation between these two fields. So we want to get a coefficient for age that is showing how much age is contributing to fair. Let's try to do something like this. So first of all, we want to delete the columns. Uh, we want to filter the columns. Let's say that we don't know exactly what to do here. We can find it. Another nice option is this Nine AI Assistant. And is what you think. So it's an AI assistant that you can ask questions. So what we can do is uh, just say, um, hey, I want to filter out some columns. How? Can you see it? No. Why not? Well, it's okay. I'm writing. I'm writing. I don't know why it's hidden, but now you will see the yeah, you will see the answer. Maybe you can zoom a bit on the UI. I don't know if uh, it doesn't. No. On on like a Mac feature and thing. No. I don't know. I I use Linux for my whole life. <laughs> and now I'm with this. So uh, yeah, I, I, I did, you, you should believe me, I was actually chatting with the bot. Um, and uh, yeah, this is what we get. So it's actually saying, hey, maybe you can use this because I didn't find it and I was asking for help. We go to the column filter, we move it here, we connect it and now it's yellow. We go into the settings and uh, we, exclude everything but fair and age. Okay, so age in, fair in, okay. And now we run and it works. So no errors so far, we're doing great. Now we say that we want to have some sort of linear model, but Let's have a look into the statistics. We have some missing values, which I don't like it. So we want to get rid of the missing values. How can we do it? Um, let's see if the AI assistant can help us. Okay, let's start with this. Let's start with this. Okay, missing value. Um, missing value. I think is this. Paolo? Yeah, it is, it is. Okay, let's go to the setting. Okay, number done. I'm gonna use it as it is, let's see what happens. Column age still contain missing values. Interesting. Let's go to the setting. Okay, we can fix it. Okay, okay. We fix with the mean. So we replace the missing values with the mean. Perfect. So I made a mistake and I get a very nice alarm for from nine and now it's fixed. So if we look into this and then into the statistics, there are no missing values. Now I want to do something else. I want to build this linear model. Um, how can I do it? One option is to use this AI assistant with build, for instance, something like, um, hey, Paul, build a, a linear, I'm typing, by the way, 
build a linear uh, model workflow. We execute it. Let's see what we get out of this. Nine say that this feature is really nice. And if it doesn't work, it's going to be embarrassing. OK. It says that it did generate something. I don't know where is it. Maybe you need to select the node before you make the question. Otherwise, it's going to add it in the in the canvas. Maybe you mm -hmm. zoom out and you, you will find where it's going to OK. I think it's, uh, it's creating stuff somewhere. Oh, yeah, maybe you can zoom out. Linear. Okay, here it is. Okay, it did create something. Okay. So if you pinch out on your pad, you should okay. zoom out. Yeah. Ah, okay, it did create some stuff. It did create a lot of things. <laughs> it is smart. Okay, here, back to, perfect. How can I, okay, why did, let me find this. Okay, change plan, it did work, but let's do this. I wanted to show this nine community hub where you can just type whatever you need, like linear regression. Can you see this? Perfect. And you get some nice answer from the community, basically. This is uh, made by also people from Nine, correct? Uh, okay. Many workflows are also shared by Nine, but you can see on the top right when there is the logo of Nine created. Like uh, I think it's it's here on the side, uh, right here. You see the icon. Okay. So we can. I think use. that what that is an exercise mm -hmm. from one of our courses, right? So mm -hmm. Okay, here it is. Yeah, here it is. We get this linear regression learner. Okay, we go back to this linear regression. More advanced nodes, so it does not appear in here. Perfect linear regression. Move it here. And we connect. Now let's see what we have inside. Okay, it's, it's already selecting the target as fair. And then we have age. And now we can just apply, okay, and execute. Okay, perfect. Now let's have a look into what we get. So to open this window, I just clicked here on the magnifier, looking into the, the data. And this is what I wanted to get. If you're if you familiar with this linear regression, mod, regression model, so now I get this coefficient for age, which is telling me how much age is contributing to fair. And that's, that's pretty much it. Something, yeah, pretty straightforward. And yeah, so this is, pretty much what I wanted to show, what I wanted to do on the fly. And let's continue with these slides, just to wrap up everything, all the things that we have seen so far. So first of all, we saw this, all these nodes, all the components that we have um, in, in NIME, and uh, we saw this, this concept of nodes, workflow, we can connect them. We saw the input, the outputs. Um, we saw this, uh, all the options that we have for each node for these components. And other, okay, we didn't see any, uh, actually here we have some plots, plots. We didn't see any plot, but we can actually create one maybe on the fly. Let's go to uh, bar plot, bar chart and we connect it directly to the input data. We go to the settings and we decide what to show. Let's say, um, 
page p class. I didn't know I deleted so many columns. Oops, okay, here it is. Um, so I wanted to check embarked, actually sex. Let's see the ratio from uh, female and male. So we select sex, we select segregation count, and uh, okay. There is a, say, like if you open the dialog, like can you open the dialog mm -hmm. again? There is a save and execute on the left. You can see this uh, white, like save and execute yeah that one perfect so it, it loads right away right this is a new generation of visualization in night and you have the settings on the side of the of the chart right and and so if you change the title you would see a change in your chart live and it's nicer than close and open every time right like a, yeah you know, that's interesting what i was used to do was closing it executing it and then going to this yeah, they're they're fairly new. I mean, compared to the many years now I've been around. It's... Perfect, perfect. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So this is the plot. Now let's continue. Um. So there is also the possibility to deploy your workflow because now we're executing everything on our machine, but we can also deploy it. And we have this. Um. So what we were seeing was basically until now was building the workflow on our machine. We checked the community hub where we found this linear regression node uh, and the whole workflow with the explanation. Uh, and then there is also the nine business hub where you can deploy your application. And uh, this is the next step, basically. You can deploy, monitor your application, share and reuse as if you're familiar with deploy is basically yeah, just it's, the point. It's how all nine makes money, right? Because normally its platform is completely free and open source. And these other software are the one that we, we sell, right? To companies for people to deploy things. Yeah. So this is the how it looks like usually. So the community hub is what we were using before. And uh, you upload, um, you have the versioning, you deploy the workflow, and yeah, and then you can you can decide who has access to what. And actually, this was a nice example of this kind of dashboard created with Nime deployed somewhere. And uh, what do we have? Uh, okay, this is the community. This oh, is okay. the, the business the hub. Business hub. So workflow is uploaded. If you play the video, you can see how you can deploy it tonight if you want. You can have access to to this user interface to try deploy things. Especially this chatbot they have, they were gonna see in a second, right? So if you, it's already load, right? It's, I think it's still going, and it shows yeah. that you can access these deployments, and then you can access uh, a data app, right? And and this means that anyone can access your workflow visualizations. They don't need to have nine installed, right? So this is really useful. All right, in this case, I think the visualization is uh, simply showing someone re-executing the model of a new input and see how the output uh, updates. Yeah, so for instance, the app that I created can go to the business sub, yeah. then we can deploy it and someone yeah. can check this result. Exactly, so you could say, hey, someone find my workflow and then they could download it and execute it or they could execute it right there in the cloud. So that's uh, handy. Okay. Okay, now next is uh, the Nime AI extension, which is also connected to the main exercise of the workshop. And this will be taken over by Paolo. So that's it from me, uh, the newbie of Nime. Thank you. Thank you, Paolo. So do you have any questions for Alexandra before we go into Because I'm the an topic? expert, I'm an expert, so. <laughs> Maybe he's experienced learning all of this or something. Yeah. So you use um, um, the report, you use pandas. Um, well, in my case, I did it. And Maybe I, I repeat the question for the okay, online yeah, attendees. Someone asked me if I'm using pandas under the hood. Well, uh, the actually Nime is implemented in Java yeah. and also some nodes in Python. Yeah, there is new nodes in Python. Yes. There are new nodes, in, but I didn't touch any code. So basically, yes. Yeah, it, it might change because we're just using the nodes. Some, most of them are in Java. 
Um, yeah, I remember back then when I was uh, using Nime on Linux that it did work on Linux <laughs> because I was using the Java machine. Right. I mean, the, the point is that we can have nodes implementing Java or Python, but a user doesn't need to know if it's Pandas or some other library in Python or just a deep, totally different thing in Java, right? But I mean, it's more something for the developers. Yeah. To, to, it's to interesting know. because what is happening now is that you can <clears throat> create new nodes with Python. So if there is something missing <clears throat> and you don't want to use Java or you want to integrate some Python libraries, you can create your node with Python and integrate all the libraries you want. So that's that's a big news because when I did it, when I was using Nime uh, seven years ago, it didn't exist. So it was only Java. Yeah. Any other questions? Yeah. For the extensions are regulated because obviously on the backend side, I don't know what the person basically created inside the Java or Python code. And when we downloaded the extension directly to the workflow, it could be a confidential client data, as for example, from my side. So, yeah, it could possibly run the data that I want. So, yeah, okay, yeah, I, wish, but... I, I think I got the question. I'm going to repeat it for the online audience with 70 people joining, the, right? So, the question is uh, um, uh, maybe I answered this one because it's a bit tricky, right? So, the answer was the question was um, how do you manage with all these? Uh, uh, employee of a company that you know just drag and drop an extension made by someone on the internet, right? And they drag and drop it, and automatically the corporate laptop is installing these nodes with who knows what code inside, right? So Nine works that when an, uh, a set of nodes is uh, made by the community, it goes on the community update site. So that means the corporate laptop, you can also check uh, whether you want only the community update site or the trusted community update site where the NIME, uh, NIME did some you know, revision on it. But then the core nodes, all the nodes we have seen today with the Alessandro, those are all made by NIME. So you can trust NIME. The, the code is open source in the sense that you can still see the code and, uh, and it's all, you know, uh, there is lots of transparency, but it's not that anyone can just, you know, Edit what these nodes do, right? Like it's uh, it's maintained by nine, and this would be the main update site that you can give. Uh, maybe a company only wants to give access to this uh, 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 safe uh, place, right? And and those are still thousands of nodes. So, yeah. All right, I think we need to get into this AI topic. Otherwise, I mean, it's nice. Uh, so just to repeat, how many of you are new to nine? Like just to Okay, so there is many people are new to Nine, so we needed to go through this to get you an introduction with our nodes, with our workflows, right? But now I would uh, um, go over the topic. Hang on a second, maybe I, I turn it like this. Okay. Yeah, no, I, I'm good with, with my laptop. Yep, thank you. All right, so I'll, uh, I'll now start sharing my screen. You should be able to see it. Hang on a second. Sorry, it's uh, improvising here, the setup. All right, so let me uh, start sharing. And then I have here my beautiful presentation on the AI learner topic. Can we see? I think it's uh, it's working. Uh, maybe I'm sharing the wrong one. So I'm gonna second, let me share the right screen. Okay, it should work now. All right, uh, I hope that everyone can see and join. So let me see, let me see if, yeah, it's working. I think we're good to go. All right, so welcome everyone to the Nime AI Learnathon. We are now starting with a more advanced topic, which is the topic of being able to use these AIs using without coding by using these nodes, right? That's the main concept. So um, what are these nodes basically? Uh, a bit a presentation of myself. I'm Paolo Tamagnini, been working at Nime since 2018. I'm working in the evangelism team of Nime. So basically, yes, we, we take the software and we can do really complex things with it. Also teach it, right? Uh, create new resources. You can see there are the cheat sheets, for example, right? 
courses and all of that. And that's uh, my team and also traveling conferences to try to, to teach data science and also through that, of course, night, right? And the, the, especially the open source and free part of it, right? That you are here today to, to learn an extension. And uh, let me know. Yeah, there we go. So those are the nodes we're gonna learn today. So these nodes are able to connect to an API or to a local model and execute one of these large language models, right? Of course, the main one they maybe you heard of a lot about is GPT, right? But you can also execute other models using these nodes and you can have data through these workflows to flow through these AI models, right? And today, of course, it's the point of customize the process a bit because if you just want to use the AI the way it is, maybe you would just go on the website of the provider of this AI, right? So we're gonna talk about customizing. So you see, this is, for example, a workflow that you can build with these nodes. And then you can see here um, that you can then deploy a workflow as a data. And then once it's deployed, someone doesn't need to know anything about Nine can use your customized AI from a web browser, basically, right? So here we have someone asking really specific questions about a document that was uploaded and the AI reads the document and answer questions for you, right? So this is a bit more advanced use case of what you can do, right? Um, of course, um, the point here is to raise a bit of awareness. And I mean, right now, I don't know if you were following OpenAI last weekend, there was so much drama going on, right? So it goes really fast, right? It goes really fast what is happening now in this field. Um, but let me just point here, uh, uh, an important point here, like these large language models do not know basically everything, right? So in the sense that if we um, take, for example, a question and you ask them, who is today the president of the United States? This was GPT 3.5. It says, I don't know. Um, last time I checked, I was trained in September 2021. I don't know, right? So the information is available, but the model itself doesn't have it, right? Because it was this really expensive process in which it was created back then. If you ask GPT-4, it's going to say something like April 2023, right? So there is an issue here. Of course, a, a, a joke that maybe is uh, interesting is that if you ask, what is the name AI learn at them? It doesn't know it. No, it's not as important as the president of the United States, but uh, it doesn't know, right? So just to show you an example, I building with these nodes, right? I put them together, I deploy a data app, and then ask, what is the name uh, learn at them? And he was able to answer. I can, the workflow is shared for you to play with as well. I can now show you this data. App. So I'm gonna second. I'm going now to uh, connect to, okay, let me share again, screen. So um, I'm gonna now go a second. This is uh, the NIME education app. You can use it also to go through the courses of NIME and I'm accessing this deployment that we have on this server. Um, and I need to uh, put my credentials because it's a, private installation of this business app, right? Uh, I'm going to second. And oh, breaking the momentum here a second. All right, so uh, Paolo Tama. All right, so there you go. So, um, okay, I'll just use uh, one of your credentials. Uh, I, I will share with you Rater credentials so you can also play with this on your own. So um, what we have here is a private installation of Nine Business Hub. I can access the team that we're gonna use later today, right? And I can go to the deployments with, where I share this data. App. And here it says here the, the deployment, right? That I can run. As I run this, of course, this is just uh, uh, for the participants of the teams to, to basically, um, see it and then you can you can see that it's loading a workflow and this is the the screenshot of before it says i'm paulo ai an ai assistant decide to help you with the ai learn them. so for example you could ask who is paulo right and this ai is instructed by my workflow on how it behaves right so if i ask paulo is the person in front of you 
the one participating in the AI learner, because they instructed the AI that gives some context on how to answer those questions, right? So something else that I can ask is, what is the AI learnathon? And when I ask this question, is going, reading the document of the event description that you read when you register for this event, and then answering the AI learnathon is an event organized by Kuhn and Agel in Hamburg. It's an in-zone session where participants and so forth and so forth. Right. So now I have a custom AI that is able to answer a question that the main AI was not able to answer. Right. And, and it, it, it looks basically pretty professional. Now, of course, all of this can be customized. I can put more title. I can design the UI differently. But it, that's it. Right. It works. So now let's see today on how this can work, how I was able to customize this really expensive model. Right. So let's see today. Um, I need to go back to the slides a second and keep going. Go on a second. So I'll I now need to share the second screen so people can still then. All right. So need to select here. All right, there we go. So those are the four ways that you use to customize an AI in such a way. They look a bit scary, right? Like fancy names, I get it. But once you get the hang of it, especially because you don't need to code, they're not such a big deal, right? So prompt engineering is um, uh, hyperparameter tuning, retrieval augmented generation, and conversational retrieval patterns. By the way, you can see here a blog post. You can also later go read it on your own time, right? But today we're gonna see an overview of these concepts, all right? So the first one is prompt engineering. So what this means essentially is that you're customizing the input of the model, right? And it's funny because there is a node here that we are showing it. What is this? String manipulation. We're, we're just creating a string with the input of the model. So for example, we have here, uh, you are an AI expert in this topic. Here is the coffee machine. It's a spoiler for what we're gonna do later. And uh, line break, line break. This is the question of the user, line break, line break. This is the piece of text that you can use to answer this question, right? So this is basically using text and combining it before the model so that the model can answer, right? And this is all done automatically. The user doesn't see this, okay? Prompt engineering. The next is hyperparameter tuning. So when you call the model, uh, you can change some parameters, okay? And this is done via uh, uh, the, the, the settings of NIME. So it's easy, it's again, no code. You just need to go inside, select the model you want. Like in this case, GP 3.5 turbo was selected. And also you can select how big the answer can be, right? So the number of tokens and also the temperature, like this will change how uh, uh, the model replies by basically uh, making the model take more risk as you increase the or decrease the temperature, right? So those are all parameters that you can play on regarding on how you want also the, the answer to be reproducible by the model, all right? To be honest, to start with, you can leave them as default, it's fine, all right? So we don't need to worry too much about that. And then the, this is the, the most interesting thing that is how actually we, I made that example work. An AI that was able to answer about AI Learnathon, right? That before it wasn't able to. And it's the concept of retrieval augmented generation. So you have, let, let's go here a bit more into this. You have your company with all this knowledge, right? We're talking about your documents, emails, like everything if you want, or maybe just a part of it, if you don't want to expose too much. And all this knowledge base can then go in a database, of course, but you can first transform it in, a, in vectors. What are those vectors? Vectors are basically a numerical representation via embedding that um, represent the semantic of that piece of document of, 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 or that entire document. This is the, 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 the concept that you need to see here is that when you have a question, that question has some semantic. What is the AI Learnathon? So this is about an event, right? And this Learnathon is then as the same vector representation as the description of the event. So let's go a bit more in detail. So you see, this is the page describing the event. It is represented using the system as numbers, right? When you then, the user is asking, what is the AI Learnathon? 
also this can be represented as number, right? And what you get then is then when the user makes a question, you can really fast using the same numerical representation that this large model use, find the answer that is the document that has the answer to that question, right? So it's a really quick way to find the document or the piece of a document that has the answer to the question of the user. And you can use this in combination with AI, right? So this is the key to be able to use uh, AI in a, in a really efficient way so that they can go through a lot of text that they were not aware about before and find the information that you want. You can have vectors for every chapter, every section, every sentence, and so on. And then finally, there is the idea of uh, conversational retrieval agents. So the idea here is that the AI is not just basically um, called once, it's called multiple times. And by this, we mean that basically the AI can go through a reasoning process before answering to you. So sometimes there is this belief that the AI, uh, just because it answered right away with a wrong answer, is not working, right? But there is lots of um, progress now in the idea to make the AI uh, execute multiple times before it can answer you. So let's make a, an example. So the user is asking, what is the name AI learned, right? Then before answering right away, the AI can ask itself, how can I find update information on this topic? Then it can go in the vector stories like, oh, I could search in this document with the event description. What should I search in this document? I could search the sentence describing the I learned. And then through this cycle, then the I learned a ton description comes out. So you see, it's not the model that right away is generating the description of the event. It's a sequence of calls that happens internally. And, and, and we have a node that can automate all of this for you, right? So this is something that you want to uh, keep in mind to understand a bit more what the AI is doing, right? It's not just a one shot that you just execute the model once. It's an automation that iterates until it finds a good answer for you, OK? All right, so this is all the things that you can do with these new AI nodes. You have agent nodes, you have the LLM nodes, you have the vector store nodes. And so all of these can be done using the user-friendly visual um, uh, nodes of Nime, right? It's, a, it's an extension that we sent you in advance to install. It's called the Nime Extension Labs. It's in labs for a reason. This is all really new stuff. We released this in the summer and we are improving it, right? It's new technology. It's, it's all really fresh, right? It's exciting, but it's still somewhat experimental, right? So that's worth to keep in mind, but also exciting to learn. Um, if you want to deep dive more, because today we want to have more of a practical session after this presentation is over. I recommend a lot this webinar, right, to watch later. And, and this webinar really guide you through uh, way more settings about the notes, all right? So maybe you already watched it, but I recommend it. All right, so uh, a recap of what we have seen today. So uh, first, you can create custom AIs, right, that are using specialized techniques to use these big models, right? We, there isn't just one model GPT that is the bigger one, but there are also others. And we can use these techniques to customize this, uh, the behavior of this model. Two, we can use vector store to use a knowledge base, right? So this about, you have all this text data and you can expose this to the AI, right? Then you Nime offers a way to do all of this without coding, which I think is great right, that you don't need to code. And you can also expose this to more people in your company. They are not super code friendly and you can go all the way to deployment without code, which is also exciting. And, um, and if you really want, you can customize this process. The, the, what we said before, that you orchestrate this loop of questions, you can really, really customize things if you want to, right? So this is worth to keep in mind. Okay, something really important. We don't make this available only with one model. You can build something that then you can re-execute with other models. So for example, 
Many now are concerned with the idea of using models that are local, that you don't want your company data to be sent out to this cloud uh, AI out there. So GPT for all is a node that we provide to use local models, right? So you can create something that works on one model and then one day a new model comes out and you can still reuse it on the new model, right? So it's a, we are a model agnostic, right, of this approach. All right, so possible cases, I mean, this is uh, maybe becomes uh, clear. You work here in a firm which has lots of legal data. There are all these legal documents. Maybe they're even public, right? You can create an AI to answer a question about really precise legal things. After, of course, it is thoroughly tested because you need to be careful, but there is potential here. Customer care chatbot, right? Like I think I already had an experience myself like this in summer. You can have someone that has um, a question about a product and, uh, and you can have a really smart chatbot to answer questions about the problem, right? I think this is a popular one. Healthcare, okay, this is a bit uh, uh, complex and delicate, but in theory, we are adding towards a day that all these patient records can be used to you know, find a quick uh, way. Maybe this is more for the doctor, right? Not for the patient, that he can think about a possible diagnosis by looking at all, all these health records, right? And ask the AI to, to look in the details for these really specific terms for which there is literature. And then there is the one that we're going to do today uh, on a machine, right? This is a bit also, let's go, we have a machine. A machine is made of many parts and we can create a chatbot to answer questions about this machine, right? So this is what we're going to do today. And the machine is not something too scary. It's a coffee machine, all right? So you have a coffee machine. I don't know if you ever bought a product that you have that thick PDF, or maybe sometimes it's also printed and you can go over through this and there are all these different instructions there, right? And this is the knowledge base that we're going to use, right? A complex, by the way, this is the coffee machine we have in the in our Berlin office, and it's really complex. So I got the manual and I built an AI to answer questions about this. So how does this look like? You can, it says, I'm a chatbot designed to help you with the manual book of the coffee machine, Barista Express, this code. So how can I assist you, right? So something that you can ask is, tell me about this really specific uh, jug control milk system, right? And then you go send and then ask you how to use this uh, temperature uh, to make the, the coffee better and so on. And it goes and sometimes you can check in the PDF whether the answer of the AI is matching, right? The, the knowledge base here, this manual book. Okay. So today exercise is gonna be split in, in a few parts and it's gonna go from easy to more and more advanced. So it's up to you. How, how far you want to take it today and how far you want to go in, in, in the next weeks, maybe. So the first part is about creating this knowledge base. So we're talking here about loading the PDF, splitting it into sentences, and then building this vector story. B is about simply using the LLM to answer questions. You have a list of questions. AI, please answer those questions. And C, to actually build this UI that we have seen. And then D, this is really optional. You can also deploy it to see how it feels in your web browser outside of Nine, right? So um, anyone with access on the web browser and to this uh, Nine Business app can access the data. All right, so for the first part, you're gonna see the, the exercise on the left. You are gonna have credentials to open AI already in the workflow, and you can then connect. Authenticate to OpenAI, we're gonna use OpenAI because it's handy today too, it's also faster uh, than, than these local models, but the concept is the same. We basically uh, use, create, select an embedding model, and then we take the PDF, we divide it into sentences, and then we create a vector store. So as you can see, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven nodes, okay? So this is the first exercise. B is about taking, uh, an open AI model, and then we are going to basically um, create a prompt. So we are gonna do some string manipulation, if you want to call it prompt engineering, fine. Prompt engineering to create the input of the model so that it can find the answer when you make the question automatically, all right? So it's, uh, it's about using the vector store that you just created in the previous exercise. 
And C, finally, is about building the chatbot. This is about building the user interface that uses the AI. All right, so for who wants to go in more advanced part and, and, and then also deploy on the, on the 9 system.